What's up everyone, it's Christian. Welcome back to my channel. Um, this video has been widely requested for the last several uh, months. But going into 2020, I feel like this will probably be the best video to go into 2020 and get everything off my chest, get everything behind me, move on. This is my video addressing why I was arrested, what happened. I have been avoiding this video for the last eight or nine months, mostly for the part of the fact that my case was still going on, so I couldn't really talk about anything. But in December of 2019, my case finally ended and I can talk about it. I'm going to explain what happened on the actual trip, how I met the co-defendant that was never brought up, and what happened in my case, and what happened over the last eight or nine months. I'm hoping that I can leave this in the past, not have to deal with it anymore, not be shamed for it anymore, not have to deal with constantly seeing comments. I know I'm going to continue to see comments. Obviously, this video is going to get a lot of them. People are very opinionated and people have the right to be opinionated. I mean, this is something big that happened and without any explanation or even an apology from me and me being silent and just continuing on with my life, of course, this is going to be something people talk about. And I'm not mad at anyone for feeling indifferent. I'm not mad at the articles or the videos or anything that went up. Regarding this situation, I'm not mad at my friends that decided to stop being friends with me even though after I got out they continued to be friends with me but while I was in jail they decided to stop being friends with me. I'm not mad at anyone. I took this as a learning lesson. It humbled me a lot and it changed who I am a lot. Hopefully you guys will be able to see that in these upcoming videos on my channel and throughout the rest of the year and moving forward I hope that you guys can see that I've genuinely changed and I'm no longer the obnoxious person that I used to be um, Just things have changed a lot I've sold a lot of my designer stuff not because I had to but because I don't care anymore I'd rather have some few key pieces that I enjoy rather than a bunch of abundance of things that I only got because I wanted people to like me um, as well as I'm getting rid of a lot of clothes over there, which um, they're all piled over there. You can't see any of them. They're all up on my Depop at Christian T. Aaron. Everything is up there. I hope that you guys check that out because I'm getting rid of a lot of clothes. I'm trying to consolidate my life and be more humble and just stop caring so much about what people think. And that situation and this situation really did help a lot. So without further ado, I am going to start from the beginning on what happened on the trip, why I got arrested, and what the incident of the case was. And then after that, I'll talk about the actual case itself, what happened during the, the case, what happened during those months, and how it turned out. So hopefully you guys will stick through this video. It will most likely be a long one because it is a couple videos put together involving the case, what happened after, and the actual arrest, and the prior to arrest on why I got arrested. This is all be in this video. So I hope that you guys stay tuned. I hope that you guys like this video and let's get on with it. So to start off, let's go way back to 2017. I was 17 years old. I was living in Florida with my parents. Me and my parents weren't getting along a lot. I was butting cats with my dad a lot. I really wanted to move out of the house and move to LA. I had just graduated high school and I was just kind of over Florida, over it, done with it. Like I just, I never belonged there. I do miss it a lot. I'm very, very homesick all the time. I do miss my family. I do love them a lot and I appreciate them a lot. But with all of that, being a factor. I was still a teenager that really just didn't want to be home. I didn't want to be in Florida at all. So I went on Tinder and Instagram and I started putting my location in other cities, hoping that I would meet someone that I could fly out to and hopefully try to live with. So yes, basically I was trying to be an opportunist, but mind you, I was also 17, very naive, very dumb to even lie about my age and go on Tinder in the first place. It's not okay. Um, and basically, I already had a boyfriend at the time that lived in Florida. We had been together for a year and a half, two years, I believe. And I still did it to try to get out of Florida. And I was only doing it to try to get out of Florida. So I met on, I believe Tinder, could have been Instagram. Honestly, I don't remember. It was three years ago. Um, I met this kid who lived in Long Island, New York. He lived in Nassau County, which is South Long Island, closer to Brooklyn. Um, I met him and he started doing these really, really shady things that I was naive and just wanted to get out of Florida. So I didn't really think twice about it. He fell in love with me through Instagram and through the way that I spoke and our FaceTime calls and all of that. And um, I don't know if it was real love. I think it was just lust of him wanting me to be there. So 
he started asking why I couldn't come visit and I was like, my parents are really strict, I can't come. I was just kind of like trying to avoid actually going because yes, I did do it because I wanted to go, but also I was starting to like get scared. Like I was 17, I didn't want to leave Florida. So this kid was like, I can help you get around your parents. What is something that interests you? And I was like, fashion, I really want to go to FIT. He was like, let me make a letter of FIT inviting you to New York for a week or two for one of those like programs where you view the campus, I'll send it to your dad. That way you can say that there's a full expense trip paid to New York um, and you can come visit me. And he was like, I'll pay for the flight and you can come stay in my house. He was, I believe 18 or 19 at the time. So I wasn't too worried. We've talked a lot on the phone. Um, really, really dumb. Yes, very dumb of me to do, <laughs> but um, I showed my dad, my dad immediately got really skeptical, was like, this isn't real, like, this is, this is not real, and so he took my phone, went through my phone, found the messages of the guy saying that he'd make it, he was like, you're definitely not going, like, I'm not letting you do that, like, you're 17, like, bro, like, chill the fuck out, like, you're not going to New York to see this random guy, you don't know if he's, like, a predator, you don't know if he's, like, old you don't know if he's crazy like you don't know anything about this guy other than what you see on social media and what you see on the internet and it's just not safe you're not going and i hate hearing the word no <laughs> more than anything because i already didn't want to go but the second that my dad said no it's over i i had to go <laughs> So I started creating uppers in my house and started acting out and trying to get my dad to kick me out. It was successful. June 29th, 2017, I was kicked out of my house in the morning and by five o'clock that day, I was on a flight to New York. Everything went well for the first six months. Um, I knew this guy, lived there for six months. We traveled, he like bought me nice things, like everything went well, very like legal, very, I could see transparently everything going on. There were a few shady things he was doing, but I don't wanna get into that because I don't know what kind of cases and stuff he's dealing with and I'm not trying to get sued, but there were just shady things he was doing on his end that I could see him doing, but they weren't like huge, huge, huge red flags. Like they were just like cheating on college tests or like cheating in, transcripts or just really shady things out there but not crazy illegal or even remotely legal just like shady so i ignored it i never met his direct family i only met his sister who i'm not going to name out of respect and um his brother who i'm also not going to name out of respect and his brother had a girlfriend and a kid very, very, very sweet. I miss that kid so much. I spent so much time babysitting that kid. That kid was so sweet. Um, also, I miss the, the brother's girlfriend. She was amazing. She still watches my Snapchats and she was just dope. Um, we got along really well. Everything was fine. The kid continued to fall in love with me. I made it very clear that I had a boyfriend and could not do anything with him. I would not have intimate relations with him. I wouldn't do anything with him. And I think that that really started to bother him because he started to get more and more aggressive. So towards December of 2017, I started to become really fed up, really done. He was trying to break me out of my relationship with this other guy. He was really, really just doing a lot. And yeah, I did lead him on and that was kind of stupid and naive of me. And I should not have led him on, that was wrong. And I do know that now because I've been led on before and it really does hurt, especially when you're going through a lot of effort to make someone happy um, being let on is like the worst thing that you can do to someone. I know that now, I was just 17 and naive. Um, but towards December, he came to me and he was like, hey, it's starting to snow. My mom gave me her credit card. Do you wanna go to Hawaii? And I was like, sure. I mean, I had been on many trips with him before um, through his card and he flew me to New York and I was living with him. So I didn't even think twice about it. I've never even met his mother. His mother lived in um, Northern Long Island. I believe it was his dad's girlfriend. His actual mother lives in Florida, but um, his dad's girlfriend um, or wife or stepmom or whatever she is, I'm just gonna say mother. He's either the girlfriend, the wife, the stepmom, the ex-girlfriend, you never know now where they are, or what they're doing. But um, I'm just gonna say his mom, his stepmom, whatever. When I say mom, that's what I'm speaking about. Her name is Lisa. Um, she's in all of the articles. I did not know her. I have not met her, but I knew that she did not like me at all because she didn't like that um, Alex, the other co-defendant, was gay. 
and she blames that on me. So she didn't like me. End of story, I'm very confused as to why his mother gave him the credit card. She doesn't like me. Why would she be like, yo, take your take take your your roommate, boyfriend, whatever the fuck to Hawaii. Let me pay for it. It was weird to me, but I didn't think twice about it because we'd been on a bunch of other trips. I was young, naive, stupid. And then more shady things started to ensue. So we go to Hawaii, everything is dandy, fine. Um, throughout this video, I'll throw up pics from the trip and things like that, um, just for evidence of my story. Once he says, hey, I have my mom's credit card, let's go to Hawaii, I'm like, okay, yeah, fine. But then he starts doing weird things, like he logged into her Amex account from his computer and he was like, don't worry, I pay her bills for her. She doesn't really know how to do it, she's old. And I'm like, okay, I mean, I've helped my grandparents out with things before. I don't I don't have their logins, but um, I, I showed them where things are on computers. Um, yeah, my grandparents and my parents have given me their credit card before and been like, yo, go to the movies. Yo, go to Bush Gardens, not to Hawaii. But like, I didn't know what their like family level was or where their relationship lied. So I was like, okay, then, okay, okay, okay. So he was logging into her credit card and he had um, he had her physical card at the time, but he changed her mailing address to his P.O. box. It was in his name in Hicksville, New York. Um, I don't know if he still lives there. I don't care. Um, I don't live there. He changed her address to P.O. box. Thought that was weird. Then he requested a new card to her P.O. box. And I was like, why are you doing that? And he was like, oh, just so that I like have my own I was like, uh-huh, okay. Still my dumbass naive was like, yo, this guy wants to take me to Hawaii. Let's just ignore all these giant motherfucking red flags. Let's go. Um, okay. So he does that. We go to Hawaii. Everything is fine and dandy. We're at the Disney Alani Hotel. He didn't actually use her credit card other than for the flight. And I was like, Okay, I guess she wants to buy the flight. Um, he used his accounts and his cards for the first half of our trip. And the reason I say first half is because we were only supposed to go for five or six days and he decided to extend it. And that is when he then used her card and he said it was for emergencies. I now see that emergencies is not actually emergencies, but whatever. Stupid, I'm fucking stupid. I'm stupid. For the first part of the trip, we stay at the Hilton Waikiki. Okay guys, so I just got off the plane. I'm in Hawaii, in uh, Honolulu. It's really pretty. Um... He buys me a few nice things for Christmas. It was Christmas, the, the week we were in Hawaii, it was Christmas. Um, so he bought me a few nice things for Christmas. Um, he took me to some dinners for all his card. He paid for them. His name was on it, came out of his account. I saw it. Um, where the arrest takes place is the flight my dumb ass why didn't i think twice about this i'm mad at myself for it all the fucking time 17 naive stupid that's not an excuse i should have known should have known but let me continue the next part of the trip we go to the disney alani hotel also paid for it with his mom's card so so far flight disney alani hotel i'm like okay it's not super weird yet because, I mean, my parents have bought me flights before, my parents have bought me hotels before, um, so nothing crazy, nothing weird, no dinners, no nothing like that at this moment. So I'm like, okay, I guess um, she's treating us to this hotel, wants to extend the trip. So then we stay at the Disney Alani Hotel, it's about two, three days, I think we were at the Waikiki Hotel for three, four days. Um, don't fully remember, don't know exactly, but we're at the Disney Alani Hotel, everything's fine, dandy, nothing weird. Um, another interesting thing is, um, when I use my credit card, I get notified every time a purchase is made, I constantly check my accounts, um, I just know everything about it. He had spoken to his mother a lot on the phone on the trip, a lot on the phone. Not once did she mention that he used the card. Not once was she mad about it. Not once was she upset about it. I was like, okay, so I guess like she gave you permission. But like, also she didn't put a freeze on the card. She didn't do anything. It's just weird to me, you know? I'm sure it's weird to you guys. 
But moving forward, he takes me to Dolce & Gabbana, buys, I believe, a bathing suit and a t-shirt um, for me with her card. It's the first time he used her card on anything other than the hotel or the flight. Then he takes me to Chanel and it's like, I really want to surprise you with like a big Christmas gift so that like you have something to like remember this trip by and he bought me a Chanel bag. I no longer have it. I actually left everything that was purchased on this trip with him. I'll, I'll explain in a second. We'll get, we'll get to that. Um, buys me the Chanel bag, buys me the Dolce & bathing suit and the t-shirt. So then I start getting these weird Facebook Messenger message requests from his mom. One of them says, take care of your woman, and then there's just, like, um, the chain link emoji, and then, like, the, um, pill emoji, and then the knife emoji, and then just a bunch of random emojis, and I showed it to him, and I was like, what? And he's just like, oh yeah, she called me and was, like, mad, but didn't tell me why. And I was like, does it have anything to do with the fact that you just bought me these things? And, um, also, during my case, when I went to my case, um, they printed photos from Dolce & Gabbana and um, Chanel inside the stores and both the stores you see me sitting down in a corner in a chair and him at the counter handing the woman the card. So what? So we get these weird phone calls from his mom. I get all these weird DMs. He's like, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I'm like, is it? He's like, I'll just buy her a gift and she'll she'll feel better about it. Now coming back from Hawaii, we were flying into LA as a layover and then flying back in to New York. And we had like a five, six hour layover in LA. So he was like, I'm going to order um, some lingerie and some like special things for her from Agent Provocateur that's really nice. Um, and we'll go pick it up and I'll bring it to her for Christmas and then she'll be fine. I'm like, okay, I didn't know that she was gonna use her fucking credit card for it. Cause like, when I buy my parents gifts, like you don't buy a gift with someone's own money. Like that's not normal. So I didn't think anything of it. It was an online order. So um, he ordered that and then went and picked it up in LA. The last part of the Hawaii trip that involves her is he tried to order a Birkin on the Real Real and have it shipped to the hotel. I work with the real real. I sell to the real real. I've met high up officials at the real real, and they one don't let you ship to the hotel, and two, if the purchase is over a thousand dollars, they don't let it ship anywhere with the billing address. So I was just like confused as to how he thought that would work, but he thought it would. They declined the order, obviously, because one, that was a lot of money. Two, it went way past the fucking credit limit. Three, um, what? Basically, that is what the real world purchase was. It was supposed to be a Birkin. Um, it was never followed through. Also, right before the Birkin purchase, he was like, yo, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to call American Express and ask for a, like, credit card increase. Um... Can you do that? And I was like, why? And he was like, oh, just like we need it for incidentals. Like the card's almost maxed out, like we need it. And I'm like, okay. He's like, I used to do all of her like taxes and all of her pay stuff. And so I know all her information. Let me, I'll just tell you what to say. And you can do it because you sound more like a woman. That was a huge red flag to me. That phone call um, was cut short. I ended up hanging up because I felt very, very, very uncomfortable. Um, once he started reading me information, I was just like, yo, bro, this isn't normal. Um, I don't feel safe and comfortable with this. This is definitely shady. Like, I'm not okay with this. The following day, we flew into LA, and the LA trip is a big aspect of this in my point of view, because this trip is where I broke free from a very, 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 very toxic person that was trying really hard to bring me down. In the LA trip, I left him. I ended up staying at my friend's house that I had met in LA prior, who actually is how I met Nicolette. Um, that was like a guy I started talking to at the time. Me and my boyfriend of a couple years broke up during the Hawaii trip. So one of the guys I was talking to at the time was Nicolette's best friend at the time. Um, I ended up staying with him. Um, and I just left. I ended up renting an apartment on Sunset and Vine in Hollywood. 
I had only a few things with me. I left him with everything he bought on the trip. I left him with all of the stuff that he had that was mine in New York. I literally was like, you know what? It's not worth it. This is really shady to me. I feel very uncomfortable. This isn't a normal situation. I, the naiveness that was in my brain at the time of being 17 and the high of everything he was doing and feeling important to um, receive all these gifts and all these trips and like things like that, like it started to wear off and that started to turn into worry and stress and I just felt very, very unsafe with him. I didn't know what he was capable of. Um, if his love went as far as doing all of that for me and not telling me that he didn't have permission from the beginning, I don't know how far his love would go and I feel like I could end up kidnapped or dead or who, I don't want to think about it, but it was really, really bad and unsafe for me and I just didn't feel comfortable living there anymore. So I left him with all of my stuff and I cut ties and I went in, moved to LA. That is when I moved to LA, it was um, that last week of December in 2017 and that's I've been in LA ever since I have not gone back to Long Island other than this case and I don't ever plan on going back I have not spoken to him since January of 2018 and why I say that is because he shipped me most of my stuff he kept everything he bought me that was a part of like our our deal was yes you can get away from me but I'm not going to send you anything I bought you I said, I don't fucking want it anyway because I don't know where it came from at this point. So he sent me all my yearbooks, my childhood stuff, some clothes, the things that I had come to New York with in the beginning. And then we cut ties. However, he randomly messages me in January and he's like, hey, my mom is reporting. The card is stolen. She's freaking out. I just want to let you know that I will let that I'm going to get dragged into an investigation and I love you so I don't want anyone to think that you did anything. I don't want anyone to think that you were involved with this because you weren't. It was all me. I dragged you into it. I made you do everything. I made you come. Like He was like, I just, I don't want this to hurt you or affect your life because you really didn't have much to do with it. Um, you were just along for the ride. And I do have screenshots and proof of him saying that. And that was the last I heard from him until the Nicolette time period. Why I say that is I did not personally hear from him, but there are comments on uh, Gabe Irwin's video and Bradley Wanamaker's video hidden in it of paragraphs long of someone reporting to be my ex-roommate, ex-boyfriend, and um, them claiming that the New York federal government or whatever is looking for me and that there's an investigation because of what happened in Hawaii. Obviously that terrified me, but I also didn't think that it would actually affect me. I thought it was just him trying to scare me and I, I, did, I thought it was a lie. I was very naive there also because I had messages of him saying that he would never drag me into it knowing that I didn't do anything and that he would not involve me. So I have since realized that that love turned to anger and to save his own ass, he tried to throw me under the bus. Because the reason that his name was not in any of the news articles was because he took a plea deal that was like, yo, let me go and I'll bring someone that you can make a bigger example out of. That's how that went. So going into the case, I'm not gonna get into too many details of what y'all was like and things like that in case I decide to do any videos in the future. Plus this video is getting long already, um, but I, was entering into customs and I got arrested. I was very confused. I didn't know what was happening. It's been three years since then, so obviously I, I didn't know what was going on. I haven't heard from him, I haven't heard about him, nothing of the sort. So I was just really confused. While I was in jail, um, he contacted my ex at the time, um, which you guys know about if you were around at the time. He also contacted all of my friends, everyone that followed me in LA. He made Instagrams about the case. He's the one that contacted um, all the press. He is the one that made it blow into a bigger thing. I know because I have screenshots. All of my friends have sent me screenshots of him messaging them. My ex at the time showed me him messaging them. Um, him trying to make it this big, big, big thing because I later found out he did it because he thought that if the world thought I was guilty, the government would too. Shit does not work like that. When the only evidence that the state of New York had against me was photos of him swiping the card and me sitting down in the chair, the phone call, and me being on the trip,
what? <laughs> Basically, throughout the case, I'm not gonna, there's no reason to get into details of every single court date because I was there for five seconds and I didn't even speak to a judge until last month, like literally just my lawyer was there and I only had to stand there to show that I was there. And the ending of the case was what I was sentenced with. I took a plea deal because I feel like I did do part of it. I didn't want to go to trial and try to even get off because I felt guilty and by this point I was extremely like humbled. I went back to Florida for a couple months, I got a job, I lived with my parents, I just stabilized my life a lot. Um, at this point I did think that I deserved something some sort of punishment. I did not want to walk away punishment free because then I would just feel guilty all the time. Um, I did luck out with what I did receive because like I said, there wasn't much evidence against me, but I still don't think that I'm trying to like, I don't want to cop out. Like I don't want to be like one of those people who are like, oh, his family has money. They bought him out of this. Like, I don't, I don't want people to think that because that's not true. Um, I, this, I decided that I wanted to take a plea deal. My plea deal was that I would take two charges, the phone call, because the phone call, um, and the fact that I was present and that I did not call the police when I thought something was shady in the first place. I also got youthful offender, which means that my entire record is sealed and it'll be a non-criminal charge, so it won't affect my life, thank God. Um, because I don't want something stupid that I did when I was 17 to affect my life. And then I have a $10,000 restitution for the gifts that he bought me. I've already paid a portion of it. I'm gonna continue paying a portion of it and I'm on probation until it is paid off. That is what I ended up getting. I lucked out considering what I was facing. But at the same time, I'm thankful that the evidence showed and that the universe gave me what actually was involved with me. That's all for the arrest and the case. However, I do want to make a extreme apology from the bottom of my heart to Lisa and to American Express. Lisa, I'm very sorry that both I and Alex did this to you. It is not okay. Um, if American Express did not press charges, then this would have destroyed your life because that is a big portion of money to come out of someone's like account, like you would be stuck paying for it or it would go into collections. I'm sorry for the fact that I had a part in destroying your credit for several months. Um, this does not go off of someone's credit immediately. I'm sorry for just fleeing and leaving the situation and not facing the consequences when it happened. And I'm sorry that I allowed this to happen in the first place. I should not have allowed him to take me. I should not have allowed this to happen. And I'm really sorry for that. Um, I hope that at one point in your life you can forgive me. You don't ever have to speak to me again, but I hope that you have closure and everything and that deep down in your conscience that at some point you can forgive me, even if you never tell me that. Um, I know that I'm sure that you won't because honestly, I wouldn't. Um, this, if this happened to me, it would affect my life a lot. But I just wanted to let you know that I'm very, very sorry for the part I did take in this. To American Express, I'm sorry for the amount of legal fees, the taking your time, the fact that all of this had to happen, and the fact that I took part in destroying an account of yours. I'm sorry to American Express as well. And to all of you out there, I'm sorry I did not address this sooner. I really, really wanted to, and I'm sorry for the view that you've had on me for the last several months, I hope that all of you in your hearts can forgive me and I hope that we can move forward and take this as a learning lesson and just move forward with the consequences I received and hope that I can do better and make a better life for myself and that I can show all that to you. I hope that I can succeed in the future with all of you behind me. Thank you if you do and thank you for those of you that have already. To end this, I'm just gonna say I'm sorry and thank you. I love you all so much. Thank you for taking the time and watching this. And I hope that you finally got the closure that you all needed. And I'm glad that I was able to finally say my side and get all of this out. It's been a huge weight on my chest for a really long time and I'm glad that I'm able to express it and talk about it. Um, I love you guys so much. Um, future content will come out. That's all for this video. I love you.
let's move forward, let's move past this, please, because I do need this for my heart to move past this. Um, and I do need to be able to show you guys who I am now and who I actually am, not a fake Beverly Hills brat or me trying to stay relevant or me helping destroy someone's American Express account as a naive 17 year old. I am sorry to everyone and I hope that this can be put behind us in 2019. Cheers to a good 2020. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching.